So three years ago, I was studying industrial engineering, and I was failing most of my classes. I went to a conference, like the one that you're going today, and there were many well-renowned speakers. There were Nobel Prizes, presidents of state, CEOs, good businessmen. But the problem was that because they were old and successful, I didn't really align with them. And then I met Rodrigo. Rodrigo was a guy working on a laptop that was like three years older than me. And I saw him beating the keys and just listening to the conference as he was managing a Skype call. I was incredibly impressed. He was one of the 10 members of Celera, which is a talent, a unique talent organization in Spain. And we actually sat down on dinner, and we realized that we weren't so much different. So I tried to think, what is he doing that I'm not doing? And the key insight that I took from this is that he was doing everything that he had in his power to fulfill his future, and I wasn't. So, as I left the conference, I came back home, and I started thinking, you know, what do I really want to do? I joined uh, a set of conferences. I volunteered on young students' organizations in order to find out which one was my true passion, because I had no idea. Um, and I think, if I can give you one recommendation, sampling it out is an amazing opportunity that we all have while we are at university. Because we have the time to try things, to fail, and then to forget about it if we don't like it. So after trial and error, I realized that my passion was aligned with strategy consulting and entrepreneurship. For strategy consulting, it's pretty easy. You need to uh, work hard, you need to pass a series of tests, and you need to get into a good consulting firm. It's a steady process, like a highway that you just need to complete. Um, I got an offer, I got into Accenture, and then later on, I moved into Open Trends. But what about entrepreneurship? How do you begin? Um, what does it take to be an entrepreneur? I had no idea. Thankfully, I had a friend with me, Sergi, who had no idea either. So we decided to create a network of people that wanted to become entrepreneurs in order to share best practices and work and fail together. There, we won a consulting case competition. We went to Web Summit, uh, Soul Summit, hopefully Slash in the near future. And what we actually created is the first entrepreneurship club of our university. And it was a space, it was a safe space, where we could all fail and learn and grow together. And you may say, OK, what are you doing today? What are, what, what's up with your life? So today, um, as, I, as Daniel very well said, I am a strategy consultant in Open Trends. We are creating a wearable solution in order to enhance the mobility of the visually impaired via open data and collaborative economy. I also went to Silicon Valley, where I managed to train for 30 days and run a marathon and do a project, uh, an underwater augmented reality experience for kids. And on top of all, I got into Celera, which was the original organization that inspired me to change. But as I look back, did I really change? How was I different? It was the same me. The only thing that changed was my mindset. I stopped wondering about all the things that I could do, and I started acting and doing all the things that were possible and doable right now. So I want to give you a set of lessons. Uh, I want to share with you my compass in life. It's the direction where I take my decisions. But I also want to give you a disclaimer, is that we all have different objectives in life, we all have different needs, and we all have different goals. So the very first lesson is that you shouldn't really listen if it doesn't align with you. There, take some things that you agree, and the other ones, just ignore them, because you are the person that is going to make your own path. So the first one is, it is way better to work in a team than to work alone. 
If you're working alone, your vision is not bold enough. Find a team that you can collaborate with, or at least a partner that you can create things better. And then focus on one area. Get that area, make sure that you are the absolute best on it. And then trust the other people. Micromanaging is a shitty experience. Just trust the others, because they're going to be better at you in the other areas. And then also try to acquire a set of skills like leadership, communication, which are useful in a different set of areas with any kind of team. The second one is that attitude is way, way better than skills. I am a firm believer that anything can be learned if you are willing to put the dedication and work into it. For example, in my own personal case, I had no idea of how to code. I did industrial engineering, and we had to make this wearable for the blind. So we decided to start going to hackathons. The first hackathon that I went, I had no idea. I started doing design, I, I g gave them coffee, and then on the second hackathon, I learned Python. And on the third one, I got into C. And now I'm learning Java. We actually won two hackathons, and we're on track on launching the first Android app. So work hard for what you want. Listen, listen, and listen. Everybody is trying to get their message out of there. But in order to have someone follow you, in order to be a leader, you need to make sure that your message aligns with their needs. And in order to find out what they need, what you first need to do is to listen. So every time someone's speaking, give them the necessary time, find out how you can improve that, and then adapt and tailor your message so that you can convince them. The other one is just do it. I have a rule, um, I have a five second rule, and it's when I'm very nervous about something, I just go ahead and do it. I count to five, you trick your brain, and you jump into it. Because this is, if you're nervous about something, it's because you're going to do it. So just, just go for it. And the last one is, it's all about the extra effort. Somewhere, there is someone working hard for the very same dream that you have, that is putting more hours than you. You need to make sure that you're the person that is better prepared to succeed that goal. And that means that you're going to have to sacrifice and just leave as very little to chance as you can. And just to wrap up, I will do a very short conclusion of what, for me, it means to be an entrepreneur. And I compare it a lot with surfing. Because in surfing, all you see from the background is these guys doing these amazing tricks. But once you actually surf, you find out that it's a little bit more shitty. There is uh, times where you feel completely alone in the ocean, helpless, and uh, you feel like you're going to drown when a uh, bad wave comes in. So in surfing, you need to have the perseverance to get up every single time after you fall from a wave. And you need to have the patience and the mindset to get the perfect opportunity. So when that opportunity comes, you need to leave all excuses behind, and you need to go all in to get that wave that will take you to shore. So as a reflection, think about what you want to be 15 years from now. Are you choosing your own future? Or are you letting somebody else choose it for you? That's it. Thank you so much. <laughs>